of the most important things that you need to be able to do in your painting business is to predict when you will be able to produce certain jobs and the total amount of jobs that you will be able to produce in a given month. This is really simple when it comes down to short, you know, one to four day jobs because you can choose and you can put them in a bucket of the month that you're gonna produce that work. But when these are long projects that extend 30, 40, 50, 60, 90 days or more, it's really critical to be able to predict what volume or what amount of revenue am I actually producing from this $100,000 or $400,000 job because it's so spread out. So in this video, I want to dive into the way that I suggest managing these multi-month projects inside of Airtable for a painting company. So if that's of interest, stick around because that's what we're going to be talking about. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris, the owner of Boolean Automation, where our mission is to free you up to do what you love. We want to eliminate all of the mind-numbing, boring, tedious, repetitive tasks in painting companies. And so we've done that for over 16 companies so far, painting companies, and we work with residential and commercial. Today's video is going to be something that typically is going to impact commercial painting companies or at least your commercial painting projects because those are the ones that tend to be longer. So I'm really excited about this topic. This is something that when I worked as a marketing director in my um, past company, this was a huge thing at the end of the month. We were trying to close out projects and identify how much revenue did we produce. And more importantly, in the future, when we're trying to say, hey, we just sold a job, it's going to take us 60 days. Um, and we had to decide how much revenue to put into uh, each month when we're trying to say, oh, our goal for the month is 400,000 or 600,000 in revenue, how much of this $300,000 job is going to be a part of month one, month two, and month three. So first thing is I made a little uh, board here. So one of the most common issues and the reason that this is such a challenge is because most of the time companies will manage a project. So in this case, let's say I have a $400,000 project and the only dates that they have on that project are the date that it starts and a date that it ends. And I might know in this case that this project is going to take me 60 days to produce. So actually let's say uh, 50 days, uh, 50 working days. So if it's going to take me 50 days to produce, the reality is like when I'm reporting on this, if I run a report with all my other jobs and I say, um, and I run, if I run a report with all my other jobs and I say, let's run all of our forecasting reports based on the start date of projects. And I should say, let's keep in mind that we've got a bunch of other projects that are, you know, an $8,000 project and it's got a start and end date. That's not complicated. The reason why this is such a challenge is because when you're running your reports, you've got a bunch of projects in July, a bunch in August, months in September, and you have to decide, do I want to pull the report for, you know, when I've got 50 jobs or hundred jobs, I have to decide which date do I want to use. And most of the time, because you're managing them in terms of projects, you have a start date for the project and an end date for the project. And so that's the challenge is that you, because of only having two dates, you have to decide, do I want to say, what's my forecast production based on start date? So in this case, if I was looking at uh, the results from, from this, the start date would be I've got an $8,000 project, a $6,000 project, and this $400,000 project. So in this case, it would be, you know, 4,000 or 414,000 is what I would produce in July. And then, and again, this is based on start date. And then if the, in August, I only have one project that starts in August. So it's saying that I'm producing 12,000 in August. And then in September, I have uh, 8,000 and 6,000. So I would be at 14,000 for the month of August. This is if you did it based on start date. Then if you flip this and do it an end date, again, similar things happen. We have 100 or 414,000 that ends production in September. It still only says 12,000 in August. And now in July, I say I have 14,000. But the reality is that you probably have a good chunk uh, of this project is happening in July. So let's say that this is more like 54,000, you know, and maybe in August, I'm doing 250,000 of that. And then in September, I've got, 
seventy thousand, whatever the the number is. But you get the point: is that the revenue needs to be split up in a better way. So what I've come up with is think about it as if so projects are your total scope and events are the things that you schedule. So a project could have one event and I should say every project must have at least one event because the event is what you're scheduling or a project could have three events. So you could have a pressure washing event that's one day. You could have an exterior painting event that is four days. And then you could have a touch-up event three days after the project is over that lasts a couple days. But the key here is that you're scheduling the events and every single event has a start and an end date. So what that looks like, if I have, you know, this one starts on the 5th, and ends on the 7th. This one starts on the 10th and ends on the 12th. This one starts on the 14th and ends on the 16th. My project start date would be the start date of this event. And my project end date would be the end date of the last event. So another way to look at this would be if I'm, and when I'm dealing with the project, I've got my name, the project type, the total number of dollars, the total number of hours. And then my start date would be the minimum of all of my event start dates. My end date would be the maximum of all my event end dates. And the duration is going to be the sum of all the event durations. So um, this, this is how we're going to structure our base in Airtable and how we're going to set all this up. So if I use this as an example again, let's say that the it starts on the first to the fourth, and this would be a total duration of four days. So I have all day on the first, all day on the second, all day on the third, all day on the fourth. That's four days. Then let's say this one starts on the eighth and goes to the 10th. This would be a total duration of uh, three days. So I have the eighth, the ninth, and the 10th. So this is three days. And then this one here, we're going to say this starts on the 15th and goes to the 18th. And so once again, I have four day project. So the start date of this project, because of everything I have here would be the first through the 18th. However, the duration is not going to be 19 days because I only have four, three and four days. So it's actually 11 days duration. So this is visually what we're going to be doing. Um, and now taking this a step further, let's say the total project just for simple math, is a uh, hundred thousand dollars so now the ideal way to figure out how much revenue was produced in each one of these events would be by saying if this event was four days and this one was three days and this one was four days the total number of days was 11 so in this month or in this particular event which could happen in the same month or not i would do a hundred thousand dollars of revenue multiplied by four days divided by 11 days. And that would equal event revenue. So that's how I think about this is that the, to the correct amount here is the ratio of the number of days that this project happened divided by the total number of project days in the event. And then same thing for if I wanna do hours, Let's say that this is a thousand hour project. So we'll say a thousand hours. Then I would do the same thing here and say it would be a thousand hours times four divided by 11 equals my event hours. So when we're trying to predict how much revenue and hours we're doing in a given event or rolling it up to a month. This is the way that you want to think about it. Um, so. If this is making sense so far, awesome. Leave a comment down below. What do you like? What do you not like? Questions you have. I'm going to dive into this topic in the next video and actually show you how to break this down and set this up in your base so that you have projects with events and each event has the ability to be in a different month, but all roll up to the same project when you're trying to run reports. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video where I dive into actually setting this up inside of Airtable. This is just one of the many, many reasons why I think Airtable is superior as a project management system. So if this is interesting to you, love for you to like the video, share this with your friends, coworkers, and let me know what else you'd like to see. But in the next video, 
which I'll link down below. I'm actually going to dive into exactly how to set this up in Airtable so you can manage your projects and project revenue in the future.